think that I was kicked out because I agree with the principles of Gamergate and I put up a poster in to to indicate agreement with the principles of Gamergate. Mm -hmm is right. That's that's my response to it too. Uh, Allison, you are not a stupid person. You know damn well how feminists react to when they see Gamergate. Holding up a banner of Gamergate is not holding up a banner that talks about what the principles of Gamergate are supposed to be. Don't even pretend. Okay? Quite frankly, Allison, you blew it, Hanky. You blew it. And I supported you very, very much when I saw what had happened to you. And you had me in tears on that video. But now you've said this, and you're being no better than Anita Sarkeesian. No better. And I also added that in my personal, my personal view as an artist that I also stand against censorship, which is something else that I've been seeing in the community. And I think that my political beliefs, and I'm, I'm actually sort of astounded that I have to refer to these as political beliefs, that we should not censor artists and that we should stand for ethics and journalism are why I got kicked out. No, Allison. No. But um, that's just it. Where, where, what had happened? What, what, at what point did all of a sudden did, did it become a dirty thing for women to be into this stuff? Like, in the eyes of so many of these men's rights activist types or... Would you like us to field that question? Huh? Would you like us to field that yeah, question? Because sure. I am a men's rights activist, so you can, okay. you can hate on me. The reason why I don't like feminism is because you promote this idea that women are defined by being victims. If you look at the context of all of your issues, men also face considerable problems as well. And they need to be brought into the story, and not just for men's sake, because this hides men's vulnerability, also for the sake of challenging the notion that women are defined as victims. What should be the repercussions here in the sense of, you know, on the one hand, when we talk about free speech, and that's something you and I obviously both both believe in, we're typically talking about the government in a role of abridging someone's right to speak. And when we talk about a conference, whatever their policy, m most conferences have some kind of clause which says if they believe that you have violated whatever it is their rules are, they kind of have final say on who's allowed to be there. For better or for worse, every conference I've been to is kind of like that. And I've seen people get kicked out for what I would consider uh, uh, weak reasons and strong reasons. Do you believe that the conference should not have that right? I guess would be question A. Should they not be allowed to say, hey, you've got to go? Well, I believe that if somebody is grossly disruptive or potentially harmful to other guests, they should be requested to leave or, or even escorted out. Mm -hmm. The reason why I don't like feminism is because you promote this idea that women are defined by being victims. If you look at the context of all of your issues, men also face considerable problems as well. And they need to be brought into the story, and not just for men's sake, because this hides men's vulnerability, also for the sake of challenging the notion that women are defined as victims. You knew going in that the convention was going to be very anti-MRA, and that it's not supposed to be a political convention. Now, yes, they did ask you to explain, but they were asking you to explain in the context of why people are there at the conference there in the first place. In this video, you're going to keep seeing me mislabel it as a convention instead of a conference, you know. Hopefully you get what I mean. You started just going off about what you can't stand about feminism. Did you expect to win people over with that? Did you expect them to feel positive about that? Now granted, I may agree with what you're saying when you told them those things, but there is a time and a place and you blew it, Hanky. I don't believe that conferences have the right to exclude beliefs based on political or I suppose they could have the right to exclude based on political beliefs, but if they do so, they should be very clear about that. 
before people attend their conference. So it's not that you're suggesting that the government mandate that conferences, private conferences can't kick people out because that in itself would sort of be an actual government abridgment of free speech, right? But what you're saying is you would rather have full disclosure and clarity when it comes to those issues. Yes. Fair enough. On, on the tweet that they made regarding our expulsion or our ejection from their expo, they reiterated their commitment to free speech publicly. And your, your feeling is that free speech was violated in a sense because they kicked you out? Well, certainly their commitment to free speech was violated. <laughs> But and I just want to be clear on this, you're distinct. We're you. I'm guessing you're using the term free speech colloquially, but not as a, a government abridgment of free speech. Right. We're talking about private business just deciding. Well, first of all, we don't know that we are talking about a private business. This is something that's going to have to be ascertained. Explain that. So so explain elaborate on that. There is some conjecture that the Calgary Comics and Entertainment Expo has taken public money to hold on their hold their event or is using a public facility so that they are actually subject to the same charter of, of rights and freedoms that any any uh, so any group that's acting with the the uh, sponsorship or the assistance of government is that's interesting because if we were I'm, that, that's actually quite interesting because if if we think about so many of the businesses that are, operate in the U.S. and in Canada, businesses that are definitely private businesses, many of them are certainly subsidized in some way by the government. I mean, certainly a company like Walmart or McDonald's, which are which are certainly private for-profit businesses, they are subsidized by the government, be it in terms of the benefits that their employees are entitled to or whatever. I think a lot of people would find it to be a stretch, though, to say that thus they should be treated like government entities, don't you think? I mean, maybe you disagree. If they're taking government funds, I think they have a right to the people that they're taking money from hmm. to uphold their rights. Interesting. So how would it impact a company like, for example, McDonald's in the same way? They, they would be subject to uh, the same scrutiny that a, that a sort of public entity or a government entity would be subject to? If they take public funds. Okay. I mean, if, if essentially the taxpayers are funding these organizations, they shouldn't have to fund organizations that violate their rights. Wow. I mean, that would the impact of that would be uh, just shocking, right? I mean, that would that would just be it would completely upend the concept of private industry. So that is very, very interesting. And that right there is why I love David Pakman's interviews. He is one of the best interviewers I have ever run across. Anywhere, really. He's able to interview people from all walks of life and ask really pointed questions and bring up really, really good points. Really good points. It's kind of sad that uh, Allison uh, on Honey Badger, um, you continually have people like Queenie Martha on there who tried to say that uh, David Pakman is doing clickbait on one of his interviews with someone who supports Gamergate because it said Gamergate at the beginning of the title. And it was a 45 minute interview in the first nine minutes this is nine minutes. This isn't nine seconds. This isn't 30 seconds. This isn't one minute. This is a full nine minutes of purely interviewing on the important elements of what Gamergate is about and things about the gaming industry that Gamergate tries to address and the problems that are in the gaming industry. And uh, people like uh, Queenie Martha says that it's uh, that's clickbait because you know, the entire interview wasn't about Gamergate. It was only nine minutes about about Gamergate and the rest of it was about the personal views of the person who supports Gamergate. Oh, you're making Gamergate look bad. <laughs> you know? Um, and all of your followers, Queenie, Queenie Martha, all your followers, some of them being the ones that uh, 
<laughs> will donate to your Patreon so you can show your boobs more. Here, I'll show you more of my boobs if you donate to my Patreon. Kind of like how you would, uh, uh, <laughs> Queenie, how you would, you would, when you first started your YouTube channel, you'd get on, you'd get on different people's, uh, 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 Google Plus Hangouts and would say just a few things and then and then just talk about oh how you just kind of flaunt oh I'm so beautiful and then it would be oh and I'm gonna act all cute and and so like a like a damn uh, Playboy uh, model uh, trying to you know I mean there's nothing wrong with someone dressing how they want but when you sit there and just push this whole oh <laughs> kind of thing and then uh, try to get people to subscribe to your channel because of it, and then you sort of jokefully threaten people to uh, to subscribe to your channel. Promise you'll subscribe to my channel. Promise you'll subscribe to my channel. Promise you'll subscribe to my channel and fucking hound people just over and over and over again. And then as soon as you're done t trying to get people to, to join, to, to subscribe to your channel, you leave the hangout. <laughs> You know, and you got a bunch of people, and you and you're and Queenie Martha is almost always on the 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 panel of these. Uh, uh, not almost all, but she's very often on the panel when when uh, Honey Badger will have the uh, you know a live uh, event. There she is in in the, in the hangout along with Karen Strawn, who <laughs> calls uh, lesbians dykes, and. Uh, tries to argue that, uh, uh, no, we shouldn't get rid of traditions, no matter how nasty they are to people, um, if there's at least one or two things about those traditions that might be okay still. Trying to argue that uh, marriage is still a great thing because children. And then she goes on to try to argue that uh, <laughs> without marriage, it, 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 you know, if you got rid of marriage, it would hurt children. And that open relationships hurt children. Because you know the parents might bring a fling over, and they might sexually they might sexually assault the child, or might abuse the child. And I try to argue back. Well, what about parents just bringing friends over? Should parents not ever have any friends if they have kids? They have to give up friends. Silence. Yes, Karen, traditionalist Strawn, you have on your panel, and so many of the people that do follow her are pretty nasty about things, you know, the types of people that would say that, uh, you know, that are like uh, Durkin, who, who tries to argue that uh, women actually did have the right to, uh, to vote before 1920, you know, there wasn't anything specifically in the laws saying that they couldn't vote before 1920, so therefore they could. That kind of crap. You know? These really foul people. And you're gonna associate with 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 people that that don't say anything negative about those those people like Durkin who and you fought, and you have people on your panel that say the shit like like Karen Strawn does, and you think that nobody pays attention to that stuff, and then when you start to push forth that you think, you know, instead of talking about feminism and how specifically it affects gaming and, and how the gaming industry looks at women in general, um, you just start going on a rant about how you don't like feminism and they're supposed to just take that nicely. The, again, the, the, the convention is not supposed to be about political battles. You know, and you know going into it that most of the people going to that convention are are anti Gamergate and they're also anti MRA. It doesn't mean that their position is right, but if you go in there just trying to, you know, th then it seems like you're trying to start a fight. Um, you know. <laughs> but you don't agree with the SPLC's characterization of AVFM. I don't agree with it. The SPCLC's characterization of AVFM. That is true. No matter what Paul Elam Elam says, no matter what kind of really nasty misogynistic articles he's put out, it's all good. There's nothing hateful about it. 
as long as they're not uh, they're not promoting actual violence against women, then they can say anything they want, and it has nothing to do with hate at all. All right. All right. Well, <laughs> you know, I don't have a very good opinion about about what feminism has turned into. Um, and there are all these all these different names now what is it transsexual trans you know what what are these these something sectional uh, 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 and there's radical feminism and there's feminism and what you feminism and feminism all these different names all this different shit that you know if if feminism is having to split up into all these things to show that well we we don't really hate this group and and we really don't hate this group you know, if it's having to fraction like that, it's, you know, it's... I talked at some point about feminism kind of uh, projecting its... Uh, propelling itself off a cliff in the future if they don't stop it. When quite, quite honestly, I think it's already propelled itself off a cliff. It's already... <laughs> it's... It's... It's already fucked. Uh, uh, but, you know, that doesn't mean that... Uh, I think the kind of shit that Paul Elam pushes out there is any sort of good message, nor the kind of shit that Karen Strawn pushes out as any sort of good message. Although, you know, there's been some fractioning of uh, a voice for men. Um, I'm somewhat ashamed to, to admit that I was uh, involved uh, a number of times on the A Voice for Men forums. Some of the things that I said, I'm not, I'm, I'm not proud of myself for saying. Um, but uh, <laughs> you know, and I'm just glad that I can look at these issues now without having this, <laughs> without getting so worked up over it. I can just look at this and be like, "Are you serious?" You know. Um. But yeah. Uh. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> Allison, are, are you going to, I mean, I doubt you'll, you'll argue this, but I mean, there's just some people that I, I, I finally muted the thread, um, when I was talking about a lot of the, uh, uh MGTOW being sort of like a, uh, a hate group of gender separatists, and there were people actually trying to argue that uh, well, it's not hate. If you think someone is inferior, that that's not hate. Oh, okay. If you think of, if you think women are inferior, that's not a hatred of women. I mean, you think cats are inferior to to humans, but I, don't you still love your cats? Oh, oh, okay. All right. Oh, mm, yeah. That's that's a real good argument there. Let me tell you. Um, <laughs> it's just. You know, and I couldn't even get, they wouldn't even admit that, you know, groups like the KKK and even white uh, supremacists are a hate group against uh, black people and, and uh, non-whites, uh, you know, and that's the, that's the ridiculousness of, of what some of these people argue. Um, oh shit, I just realized that, that this video is not going to be in 60 frames a second because I made a video last night that was not going to be so this is a 30 frames a second video oh well um and the quality is not going to be very good in general so you know oh well <laughs> at least it doesn't take as much file space right and it'll be quicker to upload or something <laughs> anyway um yeah uh allison you blew it hanky you blew it i'm sorry to say i was on your side until I saw this thorough interview by David Pakman, and I'm glad that I saw it. Um, I'm not on the feminist side, I'm not on the anti-Gamergate side, and I'm not on the Gamergate side. You know, I wanted to pretty much ignore these issues, just in general, because I was tired of them. Um, but uh, Allison, you know, the honey badger, I was going to continue following that side of it. But uh, after this, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just kind of done. Uh, and, and I continue to follow um, David Pakman because I love his interviews. His interviews are fucking awesome. 
and he's able to get to the heart of matters, and he's able to get people to say things they wouldn't normally admit on their own. And I really appreciate his interviews a lot. Thank you, David Pakman, for for continuing to be an awesome interviewer. I mean, thank you so much. You have shown light on so many issues throughout the years that I've watched your, your videos. Thank you, David. Thank you.